Filming great interviews is such an asset to have when you are out there trying to make money making videos. Almost every company needs that type of service because that's become like the go-to style of a way of explaining what the company's about, the culture behind the company, the thought, passion that went into the product that they're doing. It is vital that you get good interviews. This is your opportunity to be a storyteller when it comes time to the edit, but if you didn't get a good interview, you're not gonna have a good story to tell with all the awesome B-roll footage that you got. So here is the health the debate question that's out there. Is it better to do the interviews before you do your B-roll or after? And I have done literally hundreds of interviews. I've done it both ways and I wanna break down what the pros are to both methods. They both have their time and place. And then in the last half of the video, we're gonna go over things that automatically dictate whether you need to be doing your interview before or after you film your B-roll. So let's get into it. In a world where nuclear war has begun, Vampires fought back in super real 3D. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Rough Cut with Ash. That is me, I am Ash. I am the owner of Rough Cut Productions. I am based out of Florida and I have been making videos for over 17 years. So I'm offering all kinds of filming and editing tricks, techniques, tips, things that I have learned over the years of doing this. And when it comes to interviews, I really have made more money than any other thing that I've done. It's a love story. And most guys have a love story with their partner. If you film the interview before you film your B-roll, you are potentially going to have learned more about the company through the answers to the questions that you've got. You might think of things that you otherwise wouldn't have thought of to film that the owner of the company or the artist, whatever the interviewee is trying to talk about, you're gonna have learned more about it, gotten the information, then you can apply that to the, the concept of things that you now know that you really need to make sure that you get shot for your B-roll. So that's a huge pro in the camp of doing it before. Now, on the other side of the coin, let's say that you do your, your interview after. Well, if you do it after you filmed all your B-roll, you might have learned different aspects of the company in that way that you then can ask more detailed questions with your interviewee about that you didn't have before because you can ask relevant stuff to the B-roll that you've already acquired. You might be filming things that you had no idea that you were gonna film. Now that you've already got that in the can, you know that you want to ask questions about that because that was some of the, the most compelling footage to you. Keep in mind, if you're going into a new business, you're trying to learn as much as you possibly can about it in one go, and your fresh eyes, your fresh ears. So something that stands out to you might be a sign of something that's already for the interviewee. They're used to it. Like they become numb to it possibly. They may not even acknowledge that that's actually a really big attribute uh, that we should showcase. That really happens. I mean, sometimes I've gone in for businesses and film stuff and they didn't even think about us using that aspect in the conversation about something that represents their company. And for me, I was like, no, that's a, that's a standout thing. I immediately latched onto that as somebody that's learning about what it is that you do. So pros on both sides, but different reasons. Next, let's do another pro for if you film it before. You will potentially help your interviewee have a much better vision of what it is that you're making. The style of the questions that you came up with to ask that you think is gonna help convey the most information and the most compelling information about the company or the artist or whatever it is, that interviewee getting to hear you ask those heartfelt questions that you've done your research and that you're, you know, you know what it is that you need to ask to help sell it, like they're picking up on that. You see this bug? I don't know if it's showing up in the camera, but I had a little Mothra flying around right up in the light. <laughs> what was I saying? Oh yeah, okay, so it, they they actually might come out of that being like, oh, because keep in mind, they're hiring an artist, you're the artist. And a lot of people that are hiring artists, they're not an artist. They can't envision what it is that you're trying to make. And they can actually come out of it feeling more excited about the project because they actually feel like this person's really paying attention to what it is that I'm doing. They helped bring things out of me in that conversation because that's what your interview should try to be in my opinion. It's a real conversation so that we get genuine answers. They're going to carry that over into how much effort they're gonna give you to show you all the things that they can think of for the B-roll. It might help give them ideas of things that we need to show you that we can include in the video because you brought it up in the conversation that you just had. Now, another pro to filming the interview after your B-roll is that if this is new 
talent. If this is a new interviewee, they're not used to being filmed and they're gonna be uncomfortable, they potentially will feel more comfortable by the end of the day after they have gotten to know you a little bit better. They've seen your work ethic, they've gotten to converse back and forth with you, maybe some jokes have been exchanged. I really recommend helping people laugh so that way it kind of breaks the ice a little bit and everyone is comfortable. Are we doing okay? Do I need to be faster? No, no. Okay. No. Okay. Slower? <laughs> okay, all right. Well, then I'm gonna get some good shots. Is it possible to have on just the blinkers without the headlight? Uh, I don't think so. Can you do a cartwheel while spinning a plate on your foot? <laughs> but here's the shot that ended up getting developed out of it. Looks pretty good. This is our opening shot with it. We've recreated the same kind of shot. We're using every light we got. Try to make them feel comfortable by having an actual conversation with them prior to filming the interview. But if you're already filming all day, then you get, you've built that so naturally already. Now, there are things that dictate though, whether you really need to be filming it before or after. One of them is, are you guys filming in an environment where the interviewee is going to get dirty or sweaty over the course of the day? Are they gonna look run down if you film them at the end of the day? Because that's no good. You need to film them when they're fresh and they look great because one of the most important things that you need to pull off in your interview is always make your interviewee look good. If you can't do that, then you're not gonna be very successful with interviews. You, you want them to look awesome. All right, another thing that can dictate is sound. Sound is so important. If you have a noisy interview, then you have a bad interview. What is the environment? Is it quieter there in the morning or is it quieter at night? Is there a specific location in the facility or the place, a specific room, whatever it is, that you're only gonna have access to for a certain point in the day? Okay, and that's where it's the best place to do the interview. Another thing that can dictate when you're gonna do the interview is some of the activities that you need to film the B-roll of may only be happening during the day and that's your only time to catch it. So that right there says you got to do the interview at the end of the day. So it pulls all these questions that I just threw out there out of it. Those questions that I threw out before the pros list is when you have the luxury of choosing when you want to do the interview. Where you do want to try and maintain the choice, you don't want to have to pull off the interview in a really short window. You have the choice between doing, well, we have to pull it off in this 30 minutes, or you know that if you did it later, you can have kind of until you're done. Because that's the thing, when you're actually doing an interview, once you get started, even if you're running a little bit behind, once the interviewee is talking, they very, very, very rarely cut that interview short, especially if it's going well. There's information they're gonna wanna make sure is covered. They they want this to come out good, and they've gone through the whole day with you of seeing all the things that you're doing, and then now you've got them in this engaging conversational interview. They're not gonna just run out the door unless they absolutely have to, and you would have known that before you did this, and you would have based that part of it on choosing whether to do the interview before or after B-roll and if it needed to be done at a certain point in the day. Now, I don't wanna overwhelm you, but these are all things that come up. So first line of sight in making the decision is, when do you have to do the interview? Because if you have to do the interview at a specific time based on when you can have access to the location, it decides it for you. So you don't have to think about all those things. Are the activities happening in the place throughout the day and that is the only time that they are happening? and you have to catch those, so you're gonna to have to do the interview later. And one other thing I'll say about location is keep in mind windows and light. There's a lot of places that just have big, giant, open-faced windows. If that's gonna be a part of your backdrop for your interview, there's gonna be peak points in the day where that's just gonna be like a blown out white blob behind them, you know, unless you're doing a video about them becoming an angel, you don't want that, you know, and you probably don't have enough ND gel filters to go ahead and roll up on all the windows. Like, it just depends. That can dictate right there like you'd want to do that towards the you know towards a, a more mellow point in the day or you can look at the weather and see if it's going to be cloudy at a certain point because then it's going to stay more consistent it's a lot easier to avoid windows even though they can look cool but you are going to be chasing white balance issues in your color grade through the entire edit so you are you are making it more complicated for yourself you'll also be fighting dynamic range issues as it flexes up and down in brightness behind the interviewee and you'll have blown out stuff and then it'll come down and you know you're just 
there's all kinds of challenges with filming with Windows, so I would try to avoid those in general, unless it's a great project and it's just a phenomenal window. I mean, I've done it, I definitely do do it, but I know that I'm heading in for battle. And in, in those cases, I do recommend trying to get the talent a little further away from the window, so the white balance and exposure levels will affect them less and less. You really want your lights to be what's lighting up the talent. Like window light's great for B-roll, but for an interview, you're trying to connect the dots on something they said possibly 10 minutes earlier to something that they're saying, you know, later, 10 minutes later, and you gotta get that all to sound like the same sentence and look the same, so you're just making it more complicated. Now, what do I do? I do the dictation list first, the things that dictate when I have to do it. But let's say that I have the luxury of choosing. In general, I personally like to film my interviews after. I like to build up the rapport all day long. I like to get all my B-roll and have those additional questions that are relevant to the B-roll that I got. Also, I just, in particular, and this is the most important part, you are trying to get the best interview that you possibly can, so whatever makes that person more comfortable. You want them to deliver a great conversation with you. How well do you know this person? Is this a company that called you out of the blue or is this an old friend that you're finally getting to do a video for? It's a family, friend, connection or something and you guys have known each other for years. That That is different. They're gonna feel more comfortable with you sooner. But if it's a brand new person that's not familiar with being on camera, I really like to wait till the end of the day after they've been around the experience more and they've gotten to know me and they feel more comfortable and deliver a better interview. That's the way I feel about it. Now, another thing that I feel is, is that when you're setting up for an interview, you should set up for an interview. You want to potentially be using some lights. You're gonna get your mic placement and everything. You don't wanna move any of that once it's set. If you do, it will look different in the interview. Just moving your mic a few inches in a different, you know, and, and having a slight slightly different axis angle, it's gonna change the overall tone of their interview, so if you're trying to splice things together, it's gonna to sound obvious. So you want everything cemented down, locked down once you have it in position. And let's say that you get to the end of the interview and you have learned something that you wish that you had filmed, well, it's a lot easier to go back another day and film B-roll for a half hour to an hour than it is to come back in and try to recreate a whole setup for an interview. You won't. And what you'll end up doing, because I've done this, is you're gonna decide, we'll do like an on the fly interview. It'll be a different setup. And then before you know it, you're going back and you're still setting up for a new interview. And it's gonna be this random little section that you're now cramming into the video. You created way more work for yourself. It kind of doesn't carry the continuity. Like why are they randomly here for this one topic and then back to this? to the main interview for everything else. Like, I don't even get the point of that. And you know, you're gonna have to be inventive and work it in. So you're just creating a lot of hurdles. And I've been there and I've done that. And that's why I'm sharing this experience with you. So hopefully you can avoid doing that. And hopefully that gives you a better interview sooner. I have another video that is about lensing for interviews, and that is actually extremely important. The lens that you choose, it can affect how your interview goes, believe it or not, and it can affect, obviously, the whole feel of your video, so you wanna think about things that have to do with what type of video you're making, what the product is, why you'd want it to feel a certain way, and why you'd use a particular lens. There's actually a lot to it, and lenses do, in fact, change how people appear. I talk about that as well. Anyway, check that video out if you are curious and if you would like to follow along on more tips and tricks that I am uh, trying to offer, that would be fantastic. You can at least hit the like button if you got anything of value from this video. Hey, I'm trying to grow this channel, so I really appreciate it. If you do subscribe, awesome. If you hit the notification bell, you'll know when new episodes are out. And I really appreciate the um, support on this because I want to make more and more of these videos. There's so many things that I want to talk about. I do some fun episodes also where I take you out on job shadows and stuff like that too, through full productions, music videos, and branding videos, and all that stuff. I hope you are having a wonderful day. Take care, and I hope to catch you on the next one. Peace. Movie Voice.